So let's move to, uh, to uh, Federico Bianchi uh, at the University of Helsinki. New insight in atmospheric research at high elevation, the mechanism behind the Himalayan aerosol factor. The floor is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I'm Federico Bianchi, as you say, professor at Helsinki University. Uh, it's a very pleasure to be introduced by Professor Maugeri. I actually did an exam with him uh, 15 years ago. I don't know. He, didn't, he doesn't remember me. Anyway, so what I want to talk is about this um, Himalayan aerosol factory. It's basically uh, those come from the measurement we did. And uh, well, I'm trying to just to summarize a bit the result. Just a little introduction first. So basically, I study a process called new particle formation. And those new particles just uh, okay. So basically in the atmosphere, you can form particles, atmospheric particles. Why do we study that? We study that because they can become cloud seed, semi di nuvole. So we call it a cloud condensation nuclei and those cloud seed, so those particles, they actually can influence the climate. So that's why we actually go in the most crazy place in the world, especially top in the mountain, especially in my case, to study how the, how the particles are forming the atmosphere and the, the influence that the particles can have over the climate. So basically we did that already in the, I did my PhD, I studied in Milano, and then I did my PhD in Switzerland at the ETH, PSI, whatever. So the first measurement, actually we brought all our instruments to this station that is called the Jungfreyjoch. Uh, they like to call it top of Europe, actually top of Europe. We would have it in Italy, it's the Margarita Hut, but there are no measurement there yet. So basically we did, uh, we went to the Jungfreyjoch with the, those instruments and, um, to study this new particle formation. So how the particles are formed high up in the altitude in the free troposphere. Uh, we found that, I mean, some detail, we found that basically uh, without the SO2, without, uh, yeah, without SO2, you actually can form particles. And uh, I mean, the, the scientific news was quite big and novel. So that's why we kind of have a lot of several media coverage about that. But I mean, the point here for me is in this case, not to show I talk about this one, it was about like was the initial idea and what to do next. So, okay, yeah, I have to point the computer. So that's why I'm here now. And it's basically, I'm the Franco presentation was perfect because it actually gave a very nice introduction of the Wally Malayan system, uh, especially the Kumbu Valley. So we went to this pyramid station with a partner in crime, uh, Heike Uninen, he's an Estonian guy. So, well, now you, you have heard about, this is the pyramid station, behind is the Pumori, 7,200 meter. And those are, those are just an indication about this particle formation. So yes, at the Everest base camp, there is a lot of particles that are formed in the atmosphere. And this particle actually can influence the climate. Uh, I promise also Professor Mojeri that I would be tied to be even short as possible. So I will not go through all the detail, all the boring detail, I will just skip. But basically, yes, we do have a lot of new particle formation. So the place was ideal for the study we wanted to do. So that's also thanks to the pyramid and that time was Agostino was helping and Alberto and so many people, I mean, also all the Nepalese up there. So we brought the instrument there. We did measure new particle formation. Wow, this I'm not going to talk, is even more complicated, this plot, but basically I just want to say that all those particles are actually formed by organics. And organics usually are vapors emitted by many activity. In this specific case, we know biogenic origin every there. So basically all the particles there are formed because of the tree in the, because of the emission from the trees. So the tree emits some uh, vapors and these vapors get oxidized and they form particles. So basically the question is, are these events are these event important for the climate? Uh, we are here, that's the pyramid station. Probably most of you know it quite well. Uh, this is the Kumbu Valley, the valley that Franco was describing. I mean, actually it goes all the way here. The Everest base camp is here. It's basically a couple of hours walking from the pyramid to the Everest base camp. Uh, this is the Everest, this is Nupce, and so on. So basically, we know 
that you have a lot of gases emitted by the tree down in the valley. Then there is the usual wind that Franco probably knows very well, that every day of the wind taking up those vapors high up at high altitude, 5,000 meters where we measure. And then, well, the point is like, okay, then what happened? I mean, if those if these particles don't influence the climate, there is no reason to study them. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice phenomenon, but who cares? So the idea is like, okay, so where do the particle goes? Do they go in a place that actually can influence the climate? Uh, basically, this is a model, uh, is a forward trajectory. So basically we release the particle from the pyramid station and we look, where do they go? I mean, do they go just to the average base camp and they die there or they travel around the world? So actually, yes, those particles, they travel very far. In about 12 hours, they're above India, above China, above, so basically in the free troposphere. So actually those particles, they can actually influence the climate in a, in a, in a big, in a, in, a, in a large area. Uh, and then again, so we, I mean, I went to the pyramid in 2014 <laughs> and we published this only now. So it took seven years, but uh, we are really happy because I mean, it was a dream for me to go to the pyramid station and to measure there. And actually we also published the result. But again, what I want to highlight is kind of cartoon here. And the, the message is the world in Himalaya can act actually as an aerosol factory. That's why I call it the Himalayan aerosol factory. Because you have the tree at the foothill of the Himalaya, you have the wind, so the wall system, Himalayan system, brings this alpha pinene is called, but those are organic compounds. They bring them up there at high altitude. They get oxidized, they call highly oxygenated organic molecules, and they form particles. Then once you have this particle that's actually important for the climate or potentially important for the climate, they are dispersed everywhere above India and Asia. So actually the Himalayans, the Himalayan aerosol factory, influence and other it's even larger than the Himalayan itself that is actually not small uh, and basically okay this is a bit of a speculation my key message and it is there is still need a lot of study to do in order to but because I've been told to ask some key message and uh, ideas idea I call it forestation plus I mean we know I mean especially also in uh, Minopio uh, being a, a school for vegetation we know that forestation usually is good. Of course, it has to be done with careful biodiversity. I mean, taking care of the biodiversity, you cannot just plant one tree because you like it. But uh, you have to take care of the biodiversity to plant all the trees that belong to the area, not to bring another tree just because it works better. And then I say, okay, so forestation is good because of the CO2 capture. Uh, so if we increase, I mean, I have to also to check how, you, how was the foothills of the Himalaya 200 years ago, and how is it now? Do you, it is reduced or not? I guess maybe there are experts that know that better than me. If we plant more tree, then we have more organic gases. Of course, I mean, it's good planting more tree because of CO2 removal, this is good. Planting tree is also good, it's also a good way to provide some stable job. You have more organic gases, they go up in the atmosphere, they have more particles and then more cooling. So basically I call it foresting, forestation plus because you cool the planet by sequestrating the CO2, but you also cool it by producing particles in the high altitude and scatter the light because of this aerosol cloud interaction that explained very fast in the beginning. So, I mean, the details are a bit more complicated than that. Uh, so basically the mountains, many meteorologists know, they actually act as a air mass elevator. So they, they take the particle from down, they bring it up, either particle or gases. So we kind of using the mountain for this special purpose. And uh, yeah, and, and the other important part is that this particle in the free troposphere, they actually last much longer. There is less removal. So you have a lot of particles, they stay there for a lot of time and they can influence the climate even for a longer time. Uh, I don't know, did I really, I think less than 10 minutes. With that, I just want to thank uh, especially all the, I mean, everyone, all the committee, whatever, all the founding, uh, uh, the EVK2, but especially the people that actually helped a lot at the Everest Base Camp, the local, let's say. Thank you. <laughs>